Hey guys, Danny from dancetube.tv and today we actually had a exclusive event with Daniel from the D1 store which is the DJI authorized retail store in Australia. We had a fascinating conversation about everything you could imagine to do with drones and more specifically the Mavic Mini. So we spoke about all of the available accessories in their store, uh, the repair service that they have available, uh, some events that they have coming up, some pilot events um, and the care refresh was touched on quite heavily, which was really, I think, important to discuss because it is a little bit confusing for new pilots. Uh, so that was discussed. We showed off a lot of different accessories and uh, just lots of discussions about, about drones in general. So keep tuned for the full conversation with Daniel from D1 and all of the members from the Mavic Mini Australia group. I know that you guys occasionally have those like interactive kind of experiences downstairs where there's a cage and you can fly a drone inside of mm -hmm. that cage. Is that something that you guys offer in, in all of your different stores? Yes, we, we do have a cage in all our stores. Um, apart from the one in World Square, that one's uh, been damaged by a few people because it's outside. Um, but we do have the uh, flight cages available. Um, some stores have bigger flight cages than others. So if you go to the Glen, it's a three by three flight cage. Um, so it's really fantastic to show the drones there. Um, but like a Melbourne Central store is like a two by two tiny little cage or it might be 1.5 by 1.5. So, but yeah, all our stores have flight cages um, where mm. we can demonstrate to you like the drones and how they fly. Um, and it's really good to get a audio um, perspective as well to uh, get a feel of how loud the drones are. And you can definitely yeah. see the difference between the different models. Hmm. Cause that's actually something that I've noticed through the YouTube reviews that I've done of all, all the different drones. That's one of the more common questions I get about how noisy is the drone. And that's something that exactly, was like a bit yeah. of an oversight to me of something that I try, I try to mention it in my videos, but I guess people were actually really interested how loud it is. Cause that would obviously attract more attention if it's louder or if it's got like a different pitch to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that seems to be exactly. something that people are actually interested in. So that's good that you guys have recognized that. Yeah, it was a big thing when the Mavic Air came out, the first generation. It was probably one of the loudest, uh, smallest drones. <laughs> um, but I'm sure you're all aware, like the Mavic Mini is quite a quiet drone, which is quite nice to have. So not mm. that loud. Yeah. Yeah, it is for sure. So what's the response been like for the, the Mavic Mini through your stores? Um, the Mavic, oh, who's this person? All right, sweet. Um, so the Mavic Mini is probably one of our top sellers, um, highest moving stock, uh, mainly because mm. it's at that price point where it's like the value for money proposition, where people don't want to spend like $2,500 for Mavic 2 Pro, but they just want to get into drones and start somewhere where the Mavic Mini is that perfect spot. Um, we did have the Spark, which was quite popular. Um, the only issue with the Spark was the flight time. A lot of people, we got like a lot of complaints about the flight time was too low. So people have to keep buying batteries and more batteries. Um, whereas these minis have like a 30 minute flight time. So it's a big step forward. Um, and at that price point, you can't find any other drone that will match the specs. So, mm. And, and the, the specs have been really important. When we look at um, the user feedback on the Mavic Mini Australia, there's so many good comments come through about um, that not just the value um, component of it, so the fact it's cheap is one thing, but just the picture quality or the flight time mm. or, you know, uh, people are really quite surprised how well it handles in the wind and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, what you're paying for, uh, you end up with a you know, decent spec drone, which I think surprises a lot of people. They didn't think it'd be that good for that amount of money. Mm. That, that comes across quite consistently. Yeah. I mean, 12 megapixels. I've seen quite a few photos on the forum, um, and they're very, very decent. Like, I'm quite impressed. Yeah, if, mm. it's your, if it was your first drone, you would not be disappointed with that. I mean, I, I had a Mavic 1, I've got a Mavic 2 Pro, and, and I've got the Mini, and the Mini is a go-to for me. That's the one I use most often. Um, just easier to get out, you know, trundle around. Uh, and really for the, unless you're doing video, there's not a huge difference in quality between something like an original Mavic and the Mavic Mini. Yeah. yeah. Well, Trantia says the Mini would have been the first drone. That's very good. Which one? I'm assuming Trent's meaning the Mavic Mini was his first drone. Oh, right, right. That's, uh, quite nice. Yeah, Sweet. right. I will say it was really bad um, uh, decision by D1 to put that store in at Melbourne Central. 
It's cost me a bloody fortune because I was <laughs> I was I was a bit isolated with the one in Brunswick because I work at RMIT uh, and I work in uh, CBD at Melbourne, so I have to catch the train from Southern Cross through to um, Melbourne Central to get to RMIT and pass the D1 store every time. And I reckon that's probably hit me for a few grand <laughs> having that store so close. <laughs> like, mm. Keith, our uh, best customer. <laughs> Yeah, I bought my Mavic yeah, yeah. Pro from there, Mavic Zoom from there. I think I bought my wife Spark from there as well. Wow. Yeah. Loyal, mate. You're very loyal to D1. <laughs> so when it comes to you guys being like a, an authorized, a DJI authorized retail store, mm -hmm. what does that mean for consumers out there? Like what benefits would they have uh, coming to you over another store? Like do you have a direct contact point with DJI? Is it easier to like have some more support there or like what do you guys offer? Yeah, we, we do get a, a little bit of extra support from DJI because we are, as I said before, we're like sort of representing their brand in Australia. Um, one advantage we do have is we have access to all their services they offer. So like with the Care Refresh, we offer Care Refresh Plus, um, which other resellers don't. So Care Refresh Plus is the um, second year extension to the Care Refresh. Um, so that's something that's uh, exclusive to us that you can purchase. Um, so you can purchase two years worth of Care Fresh with us, um, mm -hmm. but you can always get the Care Fresh Plus within um, the first year of Care Fresh. So that's just one thing we do offer. Um, we get support to run different events as well. Um, so last year we and DJI partnered up to sponsor Color Run. Um, so, you know, that, that little run where you throw all that um, powder paint everywhere and get those nice colors. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so we sponsored that um, with the Osmo Actions. Um, mm. So that's something we do. Um, we also run uh, new pilot experiences. Um, I think that's something I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, but it's basically just like a, um, a free beginner's drone course that uh, runs in the store. Um, just at the moment with the whole COVID um, and the social distancing situation, we just haven't been able to run it since like February. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. That's cool. And um, like when people come into the store as well, like what kind of experience are you guys trying to create? Because I know I've been into the store and it's like very open plan. Uh, the drones are all like visible and everything. Like do you guys pride yourselves on, on being able to show things in store? Like what kind of experience oh, do you want? The absolutely. To yeah. Mm. We, we want to get that hands-on experience. Um, Cause I know everyone likes the online shop, but sometimes you just need to like get that feel of the product um, and also could, like compare the pair. So we like to um, put all our drones on display. So you can easily just go through one by one to see what the differences are, um, what the weight difference is, um, also like with our handheld devices, like the mobile, the action in the pocket, um, it's something we have actively as a demo. So you can just come in, have a play with it, see how it works. Um, so it's something, yeah, as we just want it to be nice and open. You can just walk in and just pick up the products, maybe not how, but after COVID, you can pick up the products, have a play around with it, see how it feels. Um, if you, if you're interested in getting a Ronin S, um, you're more than welcome to bring a camera in store will help set it up so you can get a feel on how that gimbal operates with your camera as well. Um, it's something that's just not like there, you can't touch. We do recommend touching the products, getting a feel how it all works, even our accessories. Just ask our staff members if you want to see the accessory in real life, they can just mm -hmm. give it to you and have a feel and see if it's uh, something that's worthwhile getting. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. That's great. And I, I, um, I personally love the Osmo Pocket. Like that's one of my favorite camera systems I think I've ever owned. It's just remarkable. Um, has the response to that been pretty, pretty overwhelming or not? When it, when it first came out, it was very popular because I don't think anyone sort of had an idea what the product would be. Like it just came out of nowhere. Mm. Like the previous Osmos were massive. They had the gimbal on the top, a long handle. Then all of a sudden they shrunk the pocket to a tiny little device with that camera. And people mm. were just amazed at like, more so like how far technology has come. The camera quality was great. You've got 4K, 60 FPS, it's all stabilized. So you don't need to go into Premiere or whatever and like stabilize it. Mm. Um, so it's quite fantastic. And believe it or not, um, it was very popular with the Asian demographic for um, like selfie vlogging. 
because mm. um, it also had that beauty mode, which sort of made your face nice and, um, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing or whatnot. Um, so a lot of people really enjoyed doing that, especially with active track. It just made vlogging so much, so much easier. So mm. Yeah, yeah no, that, that thing has been amazing. Like I know it's not Mavic Mini related, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it blew my mind because I've like, you know, tested technology for many years. And when that thing came out of nowhere, you know, just everything, like the attention to detail when it turns off and the gimbal, because like I'm, I'm used to setting up a gimbal, you've got to, you know, yeah. get the weight right, you've got to move everything. When you put it back, you've got to like collapse it down, unscrew it. Where this thing is like one button and it's ready to go. Like, yeah, pff, absolutely. Mind blowing. So easy to use. Four seconds turns on, just start recording. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, blew my mind, really did. But that was released just before the, the Mavic Mini, I believe, wasn't it? I think that got released uh, December 2018. So like, actually oh right, 2018. Yeah, mini, yeah. It's been out for a while. So yeah, I was thinking 2019 for some reason. Yeah, right. No, that was the um, Osmo three that came out, the foldable one. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, that's the more recent. Yeah, nice. One. So when it comes to the Mavic Mini, like, what kind of, um, I guess, accessories could we talk about? That's probably like an important initial step when people want to buy a drone what haven't they bought yet <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's fair enough um i've got quite a list and like got quite a few products all scattered around my table so i might go through them one by one i guess and then you can ask questions um on the uh, accessory mm. so well, also yeah. like i know that with uh, our group as well it's been amazing how many people have joined and like considered the Mavic Mini and that's why they joined the group to kind of see what was out there, what kind of shots they could capture on it. Um, so like, it seems to be like quite a large pocket of our audience are like in that process of considering it. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the Tello before, which is like yeah. significantly cheaper. Mm -hmm. How, how do you go about kind of recommending the Mavic in, in the range of other drones that are available out there? Okay. Like that's, just, that's a you know, really good question. Points. Yeah. Um, so the Tello, it has its pros and cons. So the biggest pro is it's super lightweight. So it weighs about 80 grams. And like, if you have a crash with this, it literally just bounces. Mm -hmm. Like it's got a lightweight frame. It's very flexible. Um, but like the disadvantages are like flight time, the camera quality and the range. Um, so when you look at the uh, Mavic mini, this is like a sort of like a proper drone, so to speak where you get a longer flight time, a longer range, because the Tello would only operate on your mobile phone. Um, so that will only give you about 80 to 100 meters of range uh, versus the Mavic Mini Far goes well beyond that. Um, the Tello would also have a fixed camera, so you couldn't actually point it down. So a lot of people who buy the drone, they want to get different angled shots. Um, and the Mavic Mini is the first DJI drone, or first one in the cheapest range to offer that. We can uh, tilt the gimbal all the way down so you can get those downward shots where like, I don't know, where the waves crash into the rocks. So that's a very popular shot. Um, even just angling it. So if you get like a family photo, um, that's something that you can't achieve on the Tello. We've had heaps of people buy the mini for just simple inspections. So, you know, checking out their roofs, checking out the gutters, see if there's anything around there. Um, and then the mini with the camera, you can just point it all the way down um, versus like the Tello, you can't. Um, and some people just don't need to have that 4K video. They think 1080p or 2.7K is more than enough. So they find the next step up to be a little bit overkill for what they need. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you go up, let's say even for the first generation Mavic Air, you're still getting the same range. You're still getting 12 megapixel um, like image quality. Maybe you'll get raw, but those people may not um, edit the photos in raw. So that's where the mini you know, really hits that. Um, really suits what they need, um, so to speak. Yeah, it really does, doesn't it? One thing that I was curious about as well with the the Tello is I know that it's it's a collaboration between Rise and DJI. Mm -hmm. So, do you know much about that? Because like that has always kind of fascinated me, flying that drone, and it felt like unbelievably like a DJI drone for like such a low end, but. Mm -hmm. I have like this is just an assumption. I have no idea, but it felt almost yeah. like it was kind of built by DJI, and in Rise is almost like this sister company that they've developed. And when you try to find their socials, they're like not really visible, and DJI push it quite heavily. So, mm -hmm. is like how much of the technology is DJI's in the in the Tello? 
I don't know too much about the partnership between the two, but I'd say a fair amount of DJI tech is in that uh, drone. Um, mm. Yeah, as you said, the way it flies, the way it behaves, it's uh, well beyond any other um, cheap drone around that price point. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, don't know too much about their partnership. Um, so, yeah, I can't really comment on no like how much DJI tech's on it. Um, mm. But I think also Intel uh, helped in that partnership to make that drone. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember reading about that as well. Yeah, no, it's um because that another thing that's interesting about that is the fact that you can um you can program a lot of like functions into the tele, which I found was very interesting. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's cool to see that there's you know a lower end drone, and then the Mavic Mini really does slot into that. I guess you would call it like the the best consumer drone at that price point. Like mm-hmm. it's like the the lowest quality you know, consumer drone that still stands up to a lot of the medium quality drones, you know, like it's comparable to, like we were saying before, a lot of the other drones in terms of quality mm. and just the flight experience. Mm. And that, Daniel's right. It really does depend what you sort of want to use it for. Um, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, it, yeah. Some of the more expensive drones that 4k is, is a yeah. question, questionable thing. I mean, if you don't have something to play 4k on, um, then mm-hmm. you really, it's a big investment. Um, and yeah, for myself, pretty much everything I post is on social or web. Um, so, you know, 1080 is fine. 2.7 is awesome. So going to 4k, mm-hmm. yeah, I could see that bit a big ask, but I also think, um, people that are coming in new to drones, you know, don't want to put a couple of grand down just on a maybe. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. So they're coming in, in at that lower price and then actually going, this is good. This does exactly what I want. This is great. Mm. Yeah. So having yeah. having a entry level drone with a half hour flight time on, or you only have to go back, you know, eighteen months, two years, and that was almost unthinkable. Mm. Mm. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting with the Mavic, isn't it? And it's great how they also added like out of nowhere. That's something I really love about DJI is kind of um, aftermarket care. Like it's just so unpredictable what we're going to get even after it's released into the market and the fact that they brought in manual settings as well as like a future yep. update, like it's just great. Like it's, um, I guess, I guess I'm used to that now and it's kind of expected uh, in my, like from my experiences with DJI products, you know, even with the, um, the pocket and the, the action, like they're both fantastic cameras, but they just keep adding features to it. Like they just keep adding more value to it. And, um, I guess that's exciting as well. Like what's going to come next with, with the mini, which I, sure we we can only really speculate about um but yeah that's that's really exciting because i guess we still don't know like the mavic mini could develop even more over the next couple of months exactly yeah the the dj listened to the their feedback um and then they implemented so like the manual settings for the videos was highly highly requested so they added that in um and a lot of youtubers and filmmakers really really loved that because now you can match your frame rate use your nd filters properly get that nice smooth footage um so yeah they they do tend to update continually update their drones Mm. and other products yeah no it's great so you mentioned nd filters then um Mm -hmm. will we be able to discuss maybe some some accessories yeah sure i think so i'll touch on uh yeah we can we can start off with the nd filter set um Okay. Do you, do you mind if I share my screen, if that's okay? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a little PowerPoint. Um, right. Let's see if we can get this to work. Oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh. Uh-huh. Try try now. All right. Perfect. All right. So hopefully that yeah. works. All right. So that's not part of the slide. All right. Here. You guys all see that? Yeah. Perfect. So, all right. So this is the uh, PGY Tech ND filter set. Um, so we have ND 8, 16, 32, and 64. Basically, uh, ND filter is a neutral density filter. It filters the amount of light that enters uh, the sensor. Um, So for, let's say for photos, I've got an example here. Um, 
basically this the ND filter can change how your shutter speed operates. So if you have a high shutter speed, um, basically it will try and capture the motion. So over here in this uh, photo, we can see that you can see the propellers um, versus if you have a lower shutter speed, let's say one over 30, um, you can see uh, the propellers in motion. So you capture more motion and a high frame rate, you like freeze the motion. Um, so for any filters for photography, it does help uh, depending, let's say if you're trying to capture like a waterfall um, with the drone, um, sometimes you want to capture the, uh, the water in motion. So you want to have a higher um, shutter speed, but sometimes you actually want to get the, uh, the water to flow smoothly. Um, that's when you have an ND filter to uh, allow you to do that. Because if you don't have that ND filter, all you're going to see is just a white photo because it'd just be so overexposed. So for like a waterfall photo, um, you can use a high ND filter. Um, so that's the use case for uh, photos. When it comes to videos, I think um, a lot of people tend to uh, aim to have one over twice your uh, frame rate as your shutter speed. So if you're shooting um, like 2.7K at 30 FPS video, you wanna set your shutter speed to one over 60. Um, that will give you the smoothest uh, video. Yep. Um, I tried to get an example today, but it was actually quite cloudy. So for this example, I just bumped the ISO up. So I'm trying to shoot at one over 60. This is just a still frame. Um, so you can see it's quite overexposed. Um, and if you want to edit this in, it's not going to look that great. So then what I did was I chucked a ND8 filter on and kept all my settings the same. Um, and this was the next result. Um, so you can see it's a lot more usable than the other one where it's just all white. Um, so with this, when you do your filming, it's going to look a lot nicer. It's going to be evenly uh, exposed. Um, and then if you, you can chuck a, a darker ND filter on, which this is the ND16, and they'll add a stop. But yeah, this isn't the best example because um, it was quite dark outside because of all the rain. So I did have my ISO really high, so you can see the bit of grain. Um, but it gives you an example of what an ND filter can do for your videos. Um, it's, it's especially useful if you're going around to the beach or the snow, because you have all that reflection from like the sand, water or the snow. Um, so sometimes one over 4,000, if you're on auto mode, is not enough. Um, so you, then you'll have to, um, get an ND filter to try to cut down the amount of light that enters the, the sensor. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm assuming that the uh, ND filters are fixed um, because of the um, gimbal, because um, I noticed that the Air 2 um, PGY brought out a variable ND, which mm -hmm. I thought was pretty nifty, uh, where you just yes. it's got a dial on the front where you can just go whatever setting you want. So you just buy the one filter uh, and then dial it mm -hmm. as you need it. Have you seen, have yeah. you seen that one? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it yeah. for the Air 2. It's, it's yeah. quite nice. It's about time they brought something out like that. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm assuming for the Mini, because of the way the gimbal is, that they can't do that. Yes. Um, so there's like these latches that go onto the uh, top of the gimbal where like the vents are to clip on. Um, and because the Mini has like, um, the, the gimbal's not as strong, so we can't add too much weight to that gimbal. Yeah. Um, so okay. they've just done it. So you just have one sheet of glass instead of two. Mm. And they can so, fit in all the like the bags. Can they still with an ND? Like, sorry, the uh, the gimbal cover that can still fit over. Can it? If you have one of those on, I'd recommend just taking it off after use, um, yep. and then just storing the ND filters in the um, the the PGY tech gives you a little carry case, like the one in this photo here, to store yep. them. Um, I just recommend just taking them off. Mm. Mm. Okay, I leave mine on because <laughs> the, the cover goes over the top. But okay, that's worth knowing. Yeah, no, it, it's up to personal preference, really. Um, some like you might finish a shoot and you leave your ND filter on, and the next time you go shoot, you know you got um, a different uh, light setting, so you have to switch oh, them see. Out anyway. So yeah, it's personal preference. Yeah. And do you guys um, offer any other alternatives to the, the PGY or you, you exclusively offer PGY tech? We just have the PGY tech at the moment. Yeah. Is that the same for other accessories as well? 
Um, yes, we mainly just source PG White Tech and the official DJI accessories at the moment. Um, but we are looking at different brands, so like Freewell and Polar Pro as well. So mm. on the table. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I, I got Freewell filters. They're pretty good. Mm. Yeah, both Freewell and Polar Pro are pretty cool. Definitely. Do you... Um... Oh, I just completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> no, <don't laughs> try, try. How much that little set is, that little set of four, how much it costs? Uh, these are 79 um, but we do have a group discount code where you get 10% off. So you get 10% off that $79. And cool. J- J- Jaden's asked uh, whether you do those for the for the mini. So these are the ones for the mini that we're talking about here, Jade. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I might talk about not, the it's not other... clear to me how they snap on, but I guess do they just like pop in? I'm just looking at my camera now and thinking I, don't, I can't quite see. Yeah. That. Yeah. So if you tilt your um, camera all the way down, you can see these little vents at the the very end, very oh, end yeah. of the camera. Yep, yeah. and they basically clip into those vents. Okay. So it's mm. quite a neat little system. Thank you. If I can dig mine out. <laughs> what so ones do you have, Keith? So it just sits. Can you see that? It just sits just on the top of the the gimbal there. Oh, yeah. It just clips onto the front. So it just snap. I think it, yeah, it snaps on over the top, doesn't it? Yeah. There you go. So it's yeah, it's got that top. exactly like that. Oh, cool. Which are a hundred percent better than the stick-on ones, or which fell off mid-flight. <laughs> so right, looking at my screen going oh that doesn't look right and when I pulled the mini back I was minus a filter so I'm like oh, I won't get the sticky on ones again <laughs> That's fair and, enough. and you don't can't, you can't use a find my filter can you like you can you can use a find my drone but you can't use a find my filter oh. <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> that's true all right, Wonderful. I might talk about other accessories as yep. well over here. So if you look at this photo over here, um, this one, we've got the lens hood mm. on along with the um, landing gear extensions, which are a very popular accessory. We've had a lot of people come by. Um, so some people have noticed that the Mavic Mini, uh, depending on certain angles, you do get a lot of uh, lens flare on it. Um, for some people, that's what they want to achieve um, to get that lens flare look, especially in photos or um, videos. Oops, turn that off. <laughs> Remotes batteries low. Oh, is it just frozen? And Daniel just froze. Mm. Basically, oh, yeah. I don't oh. know if you guys can see my webcam, so I might just stop. Uh, yeah. The screen share. Let's see, we'll come back here. Yeah. All right. So it sort of covers the top of the, in the front of the gimbal. So you can't actually see the camera at the moment, um, which is really handy to have. So when if there's a sun on this side, um, it's not going to glare over the uh, the the camera. Um, sometimes people really like to have the glare, but I personally hate having glare. So these lens hoods will eliminate the glare. Um, also, if you are flying, it does sort of protect the gimbal as well. So if you do have some sort of accident, um, you're not going to, you know, the first point of contact will be this gimbal, uh, this lens hood before the actual gimbal. So that's another advantage of using um, that lens hood. Um, so mm. that's just a popular accessory we have. I think they're about 16 bucks. Um, they're quite handy to use in sunny conditions, but more so just to protect your gimbal when you're flying. Yeah, that's um, a really cool accessory. Can you have? Can you yeah. put the gimbal cover over that, or do you have to uh, take that? You no, have to take it off. No. Yeah, that's cool though. I like that accessory. Yeah, it is. It is very nice. Um, I'll see if I can find my landing gear extensions up there right in front of me. So these are from PGY Tech uh, again. Um, so these uh, landing gears basically go over the top and they can fold. Mm. Um, so it folds with your drone. So then we have the back legs um, that basically clip on like so. And they give about 25 mil of extra height. So if you're taking off um, 
let's say on the ground there's a bit of dirt or whatnot and you don't have a landing pad, these are super, super handy to have because they give you the extra ground clearance. Uh, for example, today when I took off, um, I've got a little bit of um, mud and dirt at the bottom of the drone. Um, you especially don't want to have any dirt or mud uh, around the gimbal because um, that's where you have your motors and you want to make sure that moves really smoothly. So these landing gear extensions definitely help to avoid um, that during takeoff and landing. Mm. So that's another very popular accessory people get and I believe they're 21 bucks. So um, yeah. it's very handy to have. I love Joshua's the way they. Oh, go ahead. I love the way they fold up mm. as well, so mm. you can just leave them on, stick them in the bag. Yeah, yeah. that's what Joshua um, was asking. Yes, I think Joshua asked a really good question. Uh, they don't fit the fly more case, um, but they fit the other bags. I think the DJI bag, which I've got over here, so they also sell this bag as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Would you be able to show us that bag a little bit? I've been curious about that. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So it's um, it's designed for the mini, but also works with the Osmo Pocket and uh, mobile. So not mobile, action. Um, yep. So some people hate it, some people really love it. This is uh, sort of clear section, but tinted section at the front. So your drone fits in here. So just unbuckle that, and your drone will basically slide in there. Um, and then you have this side over here. So if you have the mini and the pocket, which you have, um, this might be a really good bag to get because in this side pocket, you can just fit your um, Osmo pocket right in there. So it all fits in that one little bag. And then this back bit over here, when we open it up, um, you know, you can fit extra accessories like your batteries and your controller as well. That just mm. fits in the bag there. So it's quite a nifty little bag. Um, if you want to do a YouTube review on it, um, come down to our store. You can uh, have a borrow of it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there we go. Because there's also a yellow nice. version, isn't there? Yes, there are different colors as well. This is more yeah. like a all black everything sort of style. Yeah. Yeah, that's unique. Is that a relatively new bag or has it been out for a while? It came out with a launch, I think. Oh, it did? It came out with a launch, um, but more colors have been added in. So when it launched, we were only able to get um, source out color. But now, as you said, there uh, are uh, different colors as well. I think there's a yellow one. Mm. So, nice little handy bag. Mm. Oh, um, cool. Seeing as we're talking about DJI accessories, I might touch on a few more if that's all right. Yeah. So there's this thing called the DIY Creative Kit. Um, you might have seen it before. Um, a lot of people think it's just this uh, skin you get. But you actually get five skins in that uh, case. So you'll get the default skin. So it's basically all colored in for you already. So it looks like this. Um, most people, they just use this as a practice to apply the skin onto the drone. Um, but, you know, most people just end up throwing it away. Then you have two blank versions, which you can just color in yourself. But the, uh, the coolest ones are you get three completely blank canvases, which you can just design your own. Um, and it also covers the uh, arms and legs. So I think a lot of people like buying those decals online, um, but with this DIY kit, you can sort of design, create your own design, or simply just write your name on it. Um, so if you do land or you, people can tell whose drone is it. Um, yeah. So yeah, these are quite handy. And you get three sheets as well. So if you have like any kids who are into drones and they want to get more involved, they can do uh, their own design and then just stick it on. So. Mm. Definitely a, a cool alternative um, to get. That um, is. Because you yeah. can even add on, <laughs> like, it's unlikely that people would return your drone if they found it, but, you know, you could yeah. put your phone number on there or you could put your oh, address on there. Exactly. So it's very easy to tell. Um, and these kits are just $29. So if you have kids and stuff, super, super creative to have. Or if you mm. just want to write some basic information, definitely worthwhile getting. Um, sort of like neatens it up. Otherwise, if you're in a group, you all have the same looking drone. So you can mm -hmm. get a little bit Give it a Ma Mavic Mini skin. Mavic Mini yeah. Australia skin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, I think there's one very popular one that a lot of people um, ask about. That's the Mavic Mini uh, charging base. So this little base over here. It's mm. sort of like a decorative accessory, something you might find at like Ikea. Um, basically, 
Um, there's a magnetic um, port. I think this drone has it. That plugs into the back. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little port there that plugs into the micro USB um, port. So that's magnetic. So that will actually stick to the bottom of the uh, charging dome. And then once it's uh, put in, it just stays in place because it's magnetic and it'll just start charging. Um, and a white, a white LED will light up around. So there's a little ring at the bottom. So that's quite nice to have. So if you have friends over, you can show off that you got a Mavic Mini. Um, it looks quite nice. I know some mm -hmm. people like to decorate their room, put their drone somewhere. So you can definitely store your Mini there and let it charge. So that mm. is, yeah, more of like a decorative accessory, but it's definitely a... Nice. It's a cool accessory because I, I got that accessory recently actually and uh, I'm really impressed with how strong the magnet is like it's mm -hmm. ridiculous it just holds it perfectly in there and yeah. uh, it's a really cool piece it is such a decorative piece people do comment on it when they come over. <laughs> <laughs> Good. What's that? Oh it's just a drone. Yeah, yeah. it's just a drone in a dome. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's a, another popular DJI made accessory. Um, there's just one more they make. Um, it's called a snap adapter. So a lot of people just don't really think much of it. Um, but basically in this kit, you get this nice adapter that clips onto the top of the drone um, and that you can attach a, let me get this out. It's a Lego brick adapter. So if you have any Lego figurines, <laughs> um, you can attach it to the top. So let's say you have Batman flying a Mavic Mini. Uh, that's definitely an option to have. Um, kids love putting their figurines on here and then flying the mini around. Um, but you also get this nice little uh, adapter at the top. So this is actually an LED light. Um, mm -hmm. So it shines. Oh. Basically, you get textures so you can write on it um, mm -hmm. and then it will just shine up. So light up, yeah. sorry. So it's pretty cool. And that just attaches to the brick, does it? The Lego No, bricks. no, it attaches to uh, this mounting mechanism. So that oh, right. Yeah, oh. so it just goes over the top. So, you know, if you're making dinner and your kids aren't getting to the dinner table, you can put this on, right, dinner's ready, and then fly the drone. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Didn't know that was so, a thing. Uh, yeah, is yeah. that a fixed setting for the light, or can you adjust the intensity? Um, can't adjust intensity, but you can make it uh, flash. So wow. if you're, something's very important, you can just make a flash so they can... Uh, dinner's ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come down now, otherwise it'll be cold. So, yeah, those are the uh, main DJI accessories that people get. Um, most people buy the Fly More combo, like in terms of our sales, it's like 30 to 1 of Fly More combos to uh, units. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure most of you people here would have bought the Fly More combo. It's definitely um, the way to go in terms of value for money because you get a lot of those accessories such as like the, um, the charging hub, which is quite handy to have. Um, mm. You get the spare batteries. You get the 360 propeller guards. So to me, that's really handy to have if you're flying indoors. Last thing you want to do is get one of those propellers to like slice your plaster in your wall. That's no fun at all. Mm. Um, there's propeller guards that will just hit the wall and then come back. So um, if you're flying indoors, that's definitely something to have. Yeah. So, does anyone ever fly with the propeller guards on out, outdoors? Does it, does it help in any way if you have a crash? It would I, definitely help in a crash. I've tried it and I was not, it was a little bit worrying just because like it's quite a light drone and the additional weight I noticed the wind caught the propeller guard and it actually did carry my drone a little bit. So yes, it was you know, it protected the drone if I was to hit it into anything, but I just noticed it wasn't as maybe reliable outside. That was just my experience. It seemed to blow it a little bit um, if it was windy. It seemed to catch underneath it. Doesn't it limit yeah. the uh, limit your um, height and height. distance as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I did use um, the propeller guards on over the a uh, couple of days ago when I was in a creek in a rainforest, sort of flying along the creek because I figured. Sometimes you can just misjudge the, mm -hmm. you know, tree limbs and things like that. I didn't, as it turned out, but I thought if I put that on, then it'll just, if I do skid past a tree, it'll, it won't be a problem. And in that environment, I didn't have any trouble with, um, with breeze because I was, you know, down low. In fact, what mm -hmm. I did have trouble with was GPS signal because I was in the bottom of a rainforest and the, I kept getting the little 
GPS alarm oh, popping yeah. up. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I, I haven't tried it out sort of in the open space, but I thought that might be a good idea in that environment. Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I had um, a similar experience as well because prior to me taking off above the tree line, which is where I had the issue, I was flying in a similar kind of scenario with a creek along the side. And when I was flying with the, the prop guards, it was, it was fine. It did a fantastic job because there was no breeze coming through. It was quite sheltered. But it was when I went above that tree line that it started pulling it a little bit. And you could still, you know, get it back. It wasn't like I lost the drone. But it's just, you know, being aware of that is uh, probably quite important for most people. <laughs> Yeah. So do you know, Daniel, if there are any other accessories in the works at all? Um, I don't really know for DJI. I'm pretty sure they got all the accessories out at the, what they want out at the moment. Um, I think most of their attention is focused on the Mavic Air 2 yeah. um, rather than the Mavic Mini assess accessories. Um, but we are finding the third party companies putting out more and more accessories. So like your mm. PGY Techs, Polar Pro, Freewell, um, even like the smaller accessory makers like Sunny Life, um, even like people just 3D printing their own um, propeller holders as yeah, well. I think those. that's quite popular in the group. Um, mm. So yeah, a lot of people find um, some little um, annoyance or whatever with their drone and that's when these companies create their own solutions for these accessories. So. I, I did get a um, propeller guard because I use um, a Mavic 2 bag for my Mavic Mini because um, I find that you get everything in there. You get so much in a Mavic Mini bag when you've got a Mavic, but I was lucky enough to pick up a Mavic Enterprise bag for my Mavic 2, and now I'm using the Mavic Mini bag because I'm not too bothered about the, the case. So I've actually got um, that one, which is the, the DJI one. So mm -hmm. it just... It just a little clip on the side and then you pull your drone out um so yeah i've got that little thing so because mine sits in a bag so it's not sitting in a case but i think that's a dgi original accessory as well yes yeah yeah they're very popular but they don't fit the fly more um bag no but if you yeah. if, if yeah. you've got a different uh, hard case um mm -hmm. then that's a quite a handy accessory yeah mm -hmm. absolutely because it, yeah. it covers the upper and lower uh, rotor blades, the, the top one, the last thing. That is cool. Yeah. 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 I think that's one of the biggest issues with the Mini is just the bending of the propellers in the uh, the case. Yeah. Um, I think quite a few people have come across it where you have the motor speed error. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you do have any bends in your propellers, it's always recommended to swap them out. Um, I wouldn't fly with any bent propellers or if you have that error, just swap your propellers out. Yeah, and then like and, purchase one of those propeller holders, um, like the one Keith has, or like I think Brant Winter um, prints three D prints his own. So yeah, yeah well, the, the only reason I went down that track was because that gives it extra protection as well when it's sitting in the soft case. Um, yeah, because I, I did have those um, the elastic ones on when it was in the um, the fly more case. Mm. Yeah. Would you be able to talk a little bit more about that error? Because I know there's a lot of confusion in the group and I've, I still have the issue even though I've, I've changed out the propellers. Mm -hmm. um, and like I, I was under the assumption that it only happened with the version 1.05 or whatever the latest one was. But do you know more about that? Because there's definitely a lot of confusion about that in the group. Yeah, uh, it is bringing up quite a bit of confusion. I don't know too much about it. I have uh, reached out to a few product engineers to ask um, about more about the reasoning why it's happening. Um, but at the moment, they're just telling me uh, it's caused by those bent propellers, not firmware. Um, but that's just from the DJI at the moment. So I haven't heard, um, they haven't really linked it towards the firmware at the moment. So mm. I'm saying bent propellers. So I'll see if I can get more information and pass it on um, when that comes available. Yeah, that would be handy. Because I know for me, like I um, swapped out the uh, the propellers and then I was very mindful of how I then put my Mini in the bag after that point and made sure that, you know, it wasn't getting bent at all. And then the next time I flew it, I had the same issue again. And when I put it out in the group, someone actually told me to use the DJI Assistant app and mm -hmm. um, or the software and then like uh, either downgrade the firmware or upgrade it through uh, that 
that service. Mm-hmm. So like I've tried that. I haven't had a chance to fly yet, but yeah, I was yeah. going to let the group know if that fixes anything. Um, mm-hmm. But few, few people have actually said that that was the fix for them. Either downgrading or just updating it through the assistant. Don't know what the difference would be though. Upgrading it through through the, the software, you would think it'd be the exact yeah. same firmware pack, but I don't know. I'll, I'll let people know in the group when that, when I get mm-hmm. a chance to test it. Yeah. I'll also ask the engineers for uh, more in-depth information as well. So we can provide that to the group. Mm, that would be cool. Mm. Um, just on the note of the accessories, I don't know if you would have seen this one cause you, you said you don't stop all the pro. Mm-hmm. Um, but Polar Pro, a while ago with the original Mavic Pro, they released a product called the Katana. And it's uh, basic. Yes. Have you seen that with the, the grips? Yep. And it operates mm-hmm. as a gimbal. Like you can use your, your drone as a handheld gimbal. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know if there's anything like that for the other brands at all? Uh, not with other brands. PGY Tech tried to do that with the. Um, the Mavic Air. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so PGY Tech have tried uh, to do that with the the Mavic Air, like the first generation one, um, mm. but we haven't seen another third party accessory uh, maker do that with the Mini yet. So, um, but if someone does make one, we'll uh, try to get them in because yeah. it's quite handy to have to have like a two in one device because mm. sometimes you'll reach a, a part um, where it's like you can't fly your drone, where you can just put it on a stick and then you can still record and you get that stabilized. Um, gimbal as well. So. Mm. Yeah, that was one of the coolest accessories that I had a chance to to check out with the Mavic Pro. Actually, it was such a cool concept. You know, mm. exactly. Um, th- there is one that you have missed, which is really useful. It's PGY Tech one, which is the phone holder, uh, phone tablet holder. And so I know yes. there was a question came up on our Facebook page a couple of days ago about what size phone can you put in there. A lot of people have mm-hmm. phones in cases. Um, which yeah. really limits the sort of size of phones. So I've got one of those PGY expander ones. Um, mm-hmm. So do you stock those as well? Yeah, absolutely. I've got one right here as well. Oh, there you go. So right now, yeah, right now I've got it attached to a, um, a iPad mini. Um, yeah. But yeah, these are very, very popular accessories. Um, we do sell out very, very quickly, um, but we always bulk buy. Um, they're about 33 bucks. Um, it's very nice to have. Like you can set it this way. It'll fit up to like an 11 inch tablet, um, but you don't have to go this way. You can go across um, so you can fit like your mobile phone across that yeah. way. Yeah, so that's what I do. Mm. So, yeah, yeah and, it, and it does fold up so you can like unscrew it. Um, so you can fold it up so you don't have to carry the tablet everywhere you go. That just comes out, that folds in, and then that just goes over the top. Just like so as a complete newbie here to drones, what's the advantage of going in that direction? Is it just giving you a bigger screen to work with or? Well, sort of a bit of, bit of both because I've got the mm. Samsung 10 phone um, and I use a case. So I, I can't get the limbs of the controller all the way across <laughs> the width of my phone. I don't want my, I don't want it, my phone in sort of that way. So um, I just use the cradle. And to hold the phone, and then the cradle locks in, locks into the arms at the bottom of your controller. So your phone sits much more forward, so you you, you can get your fingers behind to the controller a lot easier. Um, and I could use the phone, but sometimes I switch across to the iPad. I've got an iPad four, and so I want to go for a bigger screen. And so again, I can just put the iPad into the controller into the um, cradle, uh, and then lock it into the controller. And you're still actually controlling the drone with the little joysticks, aren't you? Is that the case? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. give, me a, give me a second. I'll stick it in the control and you can see what we're talking about. Um, but I, I would say out of all the accessories, that's probably the one that I use every single time without doubt. So, so I always use it because otherwise I've got to take the cover off my phone and to get it into the controller. Yeah. And that's got to be like one of the more more common things that people encounter, the fact that they have to take their phone out of their case every time they want to fly. And I know that with the uh, Mavic Air 2, they did um, make it possible to actually have your phone still in the case as you're um, lifting up the grip. But all the other conventional controllers don't allow you to do that. And also the cases are a bit thicker normally. So even if you mm-hmm. can get your phone in, the case is too thick to kind yep. of fit in there. So that's why this accessory is great for phones and um 
I had that as well. Yeah. So what we've got there is there's my phone, and you can see the controller sits quite far behind. Oop, hang on. Um, so the plate at the back there goes into your controller arms. You see what you're yeah. saying? So then you can you can have your phone sitting more forward, so you can get your fingers. You can use your joysticks like use your joysticks like that. Yeah, got my joysticks in, uh, but your phone's sitting a little bit before, more forward. So if I don't have that in there, I can't actually get, I can't actually get my phone with my case in the, in the arms. Hmm. And you wouldn't be able to get an iPad in there either. So that that's yeah. why that's why that cradle works really well. Yeah. So I'm I'm currently borrowing a Mavic Pro. And one of the things, and I haven't got many hours of flight time on it, um, but one of the things I seem to suffer from is almost information overload of the information that's presented on the controller and on the phone at the same time. Um, now, I'm assuming the Mavic Mini is probably is where I'm heading um, in terms of buying my own drone. Is it a simpler interface? Is there is there less information overload potential with, <laughs> with this with this nope. drone? Well, f first off, the Mavic Mini doesn't have the information screen on the front of the controller. Yeah, okay. So that's gone straight away. So you, you're down to the app. Um, and the Mavic Mini runs uh, a different app than the Mavic Pro. So Mavic Pro uses the Go 4, I think it is. Um, and yeah. Mav Mavic Mini is running a sort of slimmer uh, version of that um, software. So it doesn't have as much information doesn't have as much functionality um, in the app so it is a, a scaled down one um, but in as best way to explain it is has everything that you need on that slim down app that you need for flying so if you're going out with the Mavic Mini there's nothing that you're missing in terms of the information it tells you how many satellites you're connected to it tells you your attitude your speed and um, everything that you need the, all your essential, essential information is there without overloading you with too much information that's, okay, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's um, another thing as well about that plate accessory that you guys have shown is uh, the fact that you can also adjust your screen. So if you've got too much um, glare on your screen and on yeah. the original controller, it's fixed in a position where that yeah. one you can adjust it as well, which is a big benefit. Exactly. Um, which is a really good point because we've talked about this before about the um, position of the antenna. Um, so if, if you've got your antenna in a set position uh, where your drone is, you can move your screen around, as you said, Dan, as opposed to moving your controller cause so you can see better, and then you've just got to change the angle of your aerial. So then you've got to keep pissing around moving your aerials. So, yeah, that is definitely an advantage as well. Mm. Yeah, and just in terms of... Sorry. Go ahead. No, I just have a question about I've just um, recently brought an iPad. And uh, I've sold out to the dark side iPhone, iPad, Alstra. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm worried about the weight, um, like getting one of those holders that you can attach that hold it you know, in front. I'm just worried about it. It's a damn heavy iPad. <laughs> and I'm worried about, you know, I'm only holding on to that little controller and I've got the weight of this iPad pulling it forward. Yeah, I, um, I, don't, I don't use it on mine, um, but you can get a lanyard that you actually clip to it. Um, so then oh, you, okay. the weight is supported exactly. by the lanyard rather than your hands. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just worried, yeah, that, you know, half an hour flying with the weight of the iPad hanging off your fingers. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to get a little tiring. What are your experiences like with it, Daniel? Because didn't you say that you've got your iPad mini on there? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it can be uh, two in one, so it's a workout as well. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a, a lanyard is definitely the way to go. Um, there's okay. a clip you can clip onto it. Um, you just have to be mindful that you just don't let it fully rest. Otherwise it might slip off. Um, but yep. yes, a lanyard will definitely help take off that load. Um, just go around your neck. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's my only big issue was that, you know, that seemed to me a fair bit of weight to be hanging off your hands. I mean, I'm all right with it, but you know, I can imagine <laughs> that even I'm going to get tired after a wee bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Um, but you can always rest it if you're nearby. If there's like a table or whatnot, you can rest it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These lazy habits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joshua is asking, do you need a longer cable to attach? Yes, them? yes. Um, so th by default, you just have these um, small little cables. 
um, that just go to your uh, phone. Um, so what we typically recommend is we have this little adapter. So it's a micro um, USB to full size USB adapter that just plugs into the side of the remote. Um, and from there, you can use just your charging cable to go from that port straight into your tablet. Ooh, I um, like that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is very handy. It fits right in, uh, slides right in. And this means you're not limited to just using a, like an Apple product mm -hmm. or like um, an Android. You can use either. Uh, and most of the time when you're traveling, you're probably going to carry your charging cable anyway. Um, so it, it's only, I think this is like we sell for 10 bucks. It just slides in um, and then just connects into the, uh, the tablet. So definitely recommend picking this up with the, uh, the tablet holder. Mm. Joshua saying, uh, know what he's buying next. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've just written that down as well. That's it's a really cool good accessory. Idea. It is. Yeah. You um, mentioned a while ago, uh, just while I've got it in my mind about the, the care refresh. Mm -hmm. um, so is that something that you have to get when you buy the drone or can you buy it later on? Has that changed now? Um, so yeah, this one's a little bit tricky, but do you guys still have the rules of 48 hours? So when you purchase your, when, sorry, when you activate your drone, you have 48 hours to bind the care refresh to your drone. Um, but there are ways around it. I think some people mentioned in the group, you do videos. We do have a slimmed um, version of that, um, which I can share with the group. Um, do, do you mind if I share my screen again? Because it'd yep. be easier just That's to cool. explain it that way. We'll just share. Is that within 48 hours of your, is that for the first year of your care thing? But then you can also purchase the additional year, but do you have to do that at the time of your first purchase of the drone or can you do that down the track? You can do that down the track. Okay. Yeah. So within the, the first year, um, you can purchase the second year care refresh um, and you must have one claim remaining. So I was about to say before you haven't crashed. The thing yeah. out. So I think, I think DJI will send you out a, a renewal if you're at your end of your 12 months or coming up to your 12 months. Ask yes. if you want to do a second year. Yeah. So if you can mm. see the slide, I'm assuming everyone can see the slide. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. So yeah. So we can do fifty-three dollars for the care fresh. Um, but yeah, first excess sixty-five seventy-five. You probably read through this heaps of times. Um, there is care fresh plus. Um, so this part here, um, it would be quite important for the group. So if you've got the mini and you don't have care refresh. Um, this is a uh, solution we've come up with DJI for this group um, to allow an easy way to get yourself care refresh. So all we need is one uh, photo that shows the serial number of the product, um, sorry, of the whole product. So we might, for the mini, you'll need to have two photos because <coughs> the serial number is located in the, uh, the battery flap. You have that QR serial number on the back, back of the battery flap. So you're just taking multiple photos of um, your drone um, and then um, a copy of the original invoice and the CareFresh invoice. And what we do is we talk to the CareFresh team and we just simply bind it up for you. So you don't have to do it within 48 hours. Um, you could put your mini three months ago. Um, we can still do the CareFresh um, through those photos. So you're more than welcome to take a screenshot of this um, for reference. You can just email me those photos. Um, and then we can get that care refresh sorted for you. So, okay. Can you just clarify that, Daniel? So mm -hmm. how do you provide a copy of the care refresh invoice if you're trying to get care refresh? So typically you can um, purchase the care refresh from us. Um, you don't have to do the care refresh invoice. Um, if you purchase the care refresh, um, basically it makes the process a little bit easier. Um, because when it gets approved from DJI, we just bind it straight away. Otherwise, we tell you it's a, your CareFresh um, window will be reopened for 36 hours. And sometimes some people may miss the 36 hours and we have to go through the whole process again. Right. right. Okay. Oh, sorry. Are you saying that you purchase the, the Care Refresh and then you send through a photo of the serial number and the Care Refresh? Yes. Um, that's all, that's, uh, I mean, there's two ways you can do it. So that's the easiest way and the fastest way. Um, yeah. the other way is you just take a photo of the original invoice just to prove that your drone you have is Australian stock. 
um, yep. and then a photo of the serial number. Um, and then they DJ will reopen that care refresh window. Um, mm. But sometimes people are really busy and they can miss that window. So that window I, is typically 36 hours. So, right. yeah. Um, what, while we're on the subject of, it, of refresh, um, the the um, issue of um, no carcass, no refresh. Yes. Uh, if I drop my drone, which is highly likely into water at some stage, mm -hmm. um, and I can't retrieve the carcass, um, where, where do you stand in the refresh then? Yeah, so care refresh won't cover um, if you don't have the drone. So you need to physically have the drone. Um, this is DJI's way to make sure people aren't sort of cheating the oh, system. Oh, yeah, fr trying to fraud you. Yeah, I can understand that. But, I mean, surely, you know, the telemetry and all that sort of stuff would indicate that the drone went down in the middle of a body of water. Yeah. Um, if it was like a, a malfunction, um, that's covered under warranty. But for um, pilot, pilot error, error no. I just don't cover that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. No, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. There have been instances where they've done a replacement drone where there's been a flyaway um, and there was a couple of people on the Mavic uh, page where that happened to and they had to provide mm -hmm. DJI with the flight logs um, and all the technical data and they established that it wasn't a pilot error so replaced it. So there is an avenue that you can go from if you do have a genuine flyaway but they will want to yeah. get some evidence that it wasn't you just you know trashing it into the sea to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that is always a possibility, and I can understand that. But you know, I mean, okay, I mean, as we know, yeah, it's some days it's a little hairy out there. <laughs> mm. And and flying over water, you know, if you grant, if your sensors say dive or it changes into ATT mode, whatever it's called, um, yeah, you know, it crashes. Is that is that pilot error or is that a malfunction? Hmm. Yeah, they'll have to look at the data to see whether it's pilot or not. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. I mean, if yeah, it, if, yeah, the if it, logs and everything. Yeah, if it tra if it travelled a couple of k into the ocean and there was zero movement on the joysticks, then yeah, that, that's more compelling. Yeah, that would the be fact a that the, yeah, the joystick was on fast forward at the time. And somebody hit return to home three times. Or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, I've, no had, yeah. I've had a few friends go through the process of trying to um, trying to claim their their refresh, and it's it's remarkable what information DJI have, so they can see every single input that's gone into it, everything you can imagine, the speed, the altitude, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in the scenario where one of my friends actually uh, his drone crashed and he he just couldn't find it, it was a Phantom Four. He had pressed the return to home button. And because he hadn't changed the return to home altitude, it was still set to 30 meters, it hit a tree. Um, and DJI wouldn't allow that to be passed through because even though, you know, it was done while uh, in a return to home setting, it's still seen as pilot error or user error. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's something we've mentioned in other videos, just to like change that setting so your return to home altitude is higher than 30 meters. Because especially if you're oh, taking no, no. off from a lower point anyway, like a yeah. tree... If you find the distance, 30 metres could be nothing. So that's something and that you might... in Brisbane, there's nothing really over 100 metres tall. <laughs> so <laughs> I tend to rely on 80 to 100. <laughs> but, but especially with the Mavic Mini, because it doesn't have the sensor capability of some of the bigger drones. I mean, that wouldn't happen on the Mavic 2 because it uh, would sense the tree and just um, go over. Uh, but with the Mavic, you're yeah. correct. It's going to just keep going and it's going to hit that tree. Yeah, it's just going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there any other scenarios, Daniel, that you know of where they won't cover a, uh, a, a replacement? Like what kind of things do people need to be mindful of when they get the refresh? Uh, yeah, there's a Is few. It... I haven't really, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, one clear thing is uh, if you have bad intentions, they won't uh, do your care refresh claim. Mm -hmm. um, that's written in their policy. So, um, but yeah. Don't can't remember the list off the top of my head, but there's a a, a policy where there's a few exclusions, um, mm. which you can read where they won't cover the care refresh. But typically, it's a no questions asked uh, policy. So, yeah, they're they're generally pretty good as long as you can get that uh, physical drone back. Yeah, as long as obviously your intentions yeah, as are as, as long as you got the wreck. Yeah. yeah. 
as long as you got the rack. And with the <laughs> the Care Refresh Plus, is that just an extended uh, warranty or whatever you'd call it after that, or are there benefits to the the Plus version? Yeah. Um, so with the Plus, it just extends that Care Refresh coverage to another year, um, and you get one replacement in the second year. So Care Refresh, you get two. Um, the Care Refresh Plus, you get one in the second year. Most of the time, most people have crashes within the first year of flying because, you know, that's where you're a little bit inexperienced about the drone. Um, crashes do happen. Even the most professional drone flyers, they'll still crash their drone. It, it just happens. Um, it could even be you giving your drone to a mate um, mm. who doesn't really know how to fly the drone um, and who may have an accident. Um, so getting two years of care fresh definitely help. Um, so, yeah. We, we always recommend getting the second year because you never know what will happen. It could be, you know, a bird swooping, who knows? So, mm. yeah, that's very I mean, it, that covers all the parts as well, if I would assume. It's yeah, an extended crash, guarantee. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, um, is it always a replacement or can sometimes it just be a repair to a, like, a part that's broken? How does that work? Do you know? They, they typically just replace the drone. So, yeah. Yeah, it's easier for them just to replace the drone and they do whatever with the uh, the crash drone, whether they turn it to a refurbished product or not. Um, mm. But they typically just replace the drone. It's far easier for them. Otherwise, your wait time is going to be like two weeks. Mm. So the care first, they want so, to make it super fast. So what happens, say, if you, I don't know, break a, one of the little arms or something and you replace that yourself and you keep flying, is that going to be a problem for the care refresh? situation if you've done a DIY, DIY repair at some stage? Yeah, you want to make sure that everything's um, got like a genuine repair. Um, that's a good question. And um, that's something to ask the Carefresh team. I can't really comment too much about that because that's out of like my, I, we, we don't make the decision with Carefresh, that's up to DJI. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you, if you do do a DIY repair, I just wouldn't recommend it when you have that warranty coverage. Like if your drone's over like two years old, then yeah, you can go ahead with DIY. Um, but it's sort of like um, servicing your own car, I guess, you know. Would, you know, would like that apply to also to accessories on the drone, like um, decals, just, just the, lighting? Just, they will just replace the drone. So if you yeah. damage your accessories, they won't replace that. And no, what about no, that? I mean, if that is, you know, the cause of some drama. Uh, I'll probably read through the care refresh policies um, from yep. the top of my head. I think if they're using um, non-approved third-party accessories may make your claim invalid. Yeah, um, well, say like putting those engine caps on, would that invalidate your oh, the rotor? The rotor covers. Yeah. Well, you know, the, no, the ones you put on stop the dust getting into your motor. Yeah, the rotor covers. Oh. Yeah, another one. Yeah. yeah. Would would that affect your um, DJ care? Would you be using that during flight or storage? No, uh, in flight. Evidently, I don't have one. <laughs> I have them, but um, people put them on and, and fly them. Uh, would okay. that affect the, the, the care? Can't comment, can't give you a 100% answer. Definitive. Yeah, yeah, I can't give you a definitive answer, but I probably wouldn't recommend covering the uh, motors during flight. Yeah. They, they, um, they've been shown to cause overheating on the motors. Mm, um, I was just about to say that. Uh, especially again, you want to try and get as much airflow around <laughs> those rotors as you possibly can. So, yeah. It's probably going to encourage it. But it, I mean, when I sent my Mavic back to DJI, um, because I bought a second-hand one and somebody changed the default settings on the joysticks. So I got it out and threw it straight into a wall. Which oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I've literally had it for about 20 minutes. I was so pissed off. Um, but when I, contact, when I contacted them to send it back, they just said, take everything off. So take the decals off. And any accessories you've got, send back the <coughs> drone. So yeah. I mean, if, you, if you do have... Um, you know, leg extenders or whatever on there and just send back the drone. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One thing I'm really curious about is if 
the carry fresh covers you for any issues going on with the controller like we're talking about the drone but what happens if an issue happens with your controller yeah they do dan um so i yeah i actually broke um that you know on the mavic pro it's got the the little toggle button on, mm-hmm. on the front yeah mine snapped off so i sent oh. back my controller and got the controller replaced oh, didn't great. have to send the drone I just sent it in the controller yeah that's good then that's really good so um daniel also you were saying that the the price will have a slightly discounted price for the group so how do mm-hmm. people just have to email you if uh, if they want to get that price uh yeah you can either email me or you can i'm working towards to get a generic uh code for this group so that anyone can use to get 10 percent off um when i get more information on that i'll send it to you guys um so you can notify everyone but yeah right now just email me but we're working towards getting a code so my inbox inbox isn't flooded with uh, requests yeah um there were a few members purchased the mavic mini in the run up to the end of the financial year. Um, and uh, they uh, were very, very happy with the deal you um, gave to the group. So thank you very much for that on behalf of those that uh, managed to take advantage of that. That's very good to hear. I'm glad that uh, people took advantage of that. Um, but yeah, we'll and, always and will, there, will there be another opportunity like that, please? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we'll definitely look after this group. Um, you guys have done a lot for us, so we're definitely going to... Um, um, yeah, but just a straight-out swap for the Mavic Mini for the Mavic Mini 2. <laughs> <laughs> actually, nice. actually uh, it, it, I did write down a question, which is, have you got any inside goss yet on the Mavic 3? Inside goss on the Mavic 3. We haven't heard too much. Um, we, do, we don't get told anything until uh, the release date, so... Right. Um, most of the rumors we we get, well, I read are uh, just from your typical. I think there's one guy on Twitter who's pretty good at predicting the products. Um, but there's a few rumor sites that in the past have had pretty good predictions. So, um, yeah, I don't know how much DJI can really improve on the on the Mavic Two Pro because it's already a phenomenal drone. But mm. I guess extra flight time and the newer active track could. Uh, could be quite handy. I, I saw some um, uh, rumor mill last week um, where they actually yeah. had some photos of the prototypes where they're talking about it going to an H train similar to the um, Inspire, mm. uh, but foldable. So a, a, a foldable H, yeah, foldable H frame, which would make it really stable in the wind. Yeah. So maybe they. Yeah. Maybe I just, go down I just want something where the where the um landing gear folds up that it took me <laughs> that's inspired isn't it inspired too yeah yeah, yeah it just so. folds up i love that yeah. <laughs> hmm. so what else did i have oh you were you going to talk about the flight school or is that because that's on hold now oh uh, yes so i think i've got a slide here um, so yeah, the the new new pilot experience. I think I mentioned it earlier in this meeting, um, but it's something that we uh, run that's open to anyone who can just turn up. Um, it we typically run it Thursday night, six to eight pm, because that's uh, late night shopping across the nation. Um, so it's uh, one one and a half to two hour course that takes you through um, basically opening your drone for the first time, um, learning about all the features on the app. So we ran the Go4 over the Christmas period. It was quite popular. We had, for well, at some points, 30 people rock up into our stores to uh, attend this. Um, it's very handy. We have like CASA pamphlets as well, um, which you can look at quickly look at the, uh, the drone laws they have. Um, they support us with all that material. Um, and our staff members will go through like how to utilize return to home like as, um, as Dan said, he recommends changing the return to home. That's something we touch on. Um, also like the different intelligent flight modes, um, cause it is overwhelming looking at all the uh, flight modes and things you can do. Um, we sort of break it down and be like, Hey, this is what you can use. Um, like active track, this is how to use it. Um, people go like, Oh, what's profile, you know, uh, rotate around the, um, active track. So we go through all of that. We touch on photography and videography settings. 
Um, some of our staff members um, are professional photographers. So they run, they go quite in depth into the photography and video settings to make sure that, you know, um, all the, all about that frame rate rule, um, how to get the most out of the camera. Um, so we're trying to integrate DJI fly now into that, um, that little course. Um, so then hopefully we can, people who turn up can both learn something about like the Mavic 2 Pro um, and also about the Mavic Air 2. So it's basically a, just a two hour crash course to get you up to speed on how to use the, uh, the drone. Mm. And it's all free. So you just, you just uh, rock up. Do you think this be... You guys go. go. Uh, can you let us know when you're uh, reactivating that? Because we'll certainly make an announcement on our page because I think that would be really useful for people contemplating getting a drone or those that have just got one if they wanted to get some real good you know, in-depth knowledge and some of those settings. I know we have a lot of questions around photography and video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you guys know. Um, we just hope the restrictions ease. Um, mm. So, yeah, because we just don't want too many people into one store. So, yeah. Have you guys thought about offering an, an online alternative? Um, we tried to do, we were contemplating it, um, but with the whole COVID situation, um, we just had to, we had, we had to focus our attention on um, sort of changing the way we run things. So we, the, the course is basically um, put on hold, so we didn't really change anything, but we've been working in the background to integrate the fly app into the course. So that's cool. what we've been doing during this off period. So that's cool. Um, when, when we come back, we should have it all streamlined. So um, there'll be features that are on go for and fly that we can both talk about, but there's some specific features on the fly that's not available on go for or vice versa. So, yeah, so hmm. trying to make sure that we can cover both apps within that time frame. Yeah, that's awesome. And also you mentioned that within your your team as well, you've got people who are like photographers and, and videographers. So mm -hmm. would there be an opportunity to maybe have one of them join us to maybe discuss in more depth some of these settings? Do you Absolutely. think that's something we can maybe try to organize? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can uh, get one of our team members to uh, hop on and uh, talk about that. Be pretty good. There will be somebody who speaks in English, plain speak. <laughs> F3 really means nothing to me, but a highway between Newcastle and Sydney. <laughs> F3. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll simplify it, um, but we'll go in depth, but simplify it. Yeah. Cool. And with that, um, that pilot experience as well, like you mentioned that you would uh, whoever is running that experience that they, they would show off the application and certain features like what mm -hmm. what other kind of experiences can like potential guests or pilots have during this uh pilot experience yeah like, what other um, things you guys do? yeah so we, we can't really do too much in terms of flying the drone um, mm. but we have a lot of pre-recorded uh, videos that demonstrate the different flight modes. So we we have a in some stores we have like a three by three screen. It's absolutely massive. So we put those videos on there so you can see um, how it all works. We also have a pretty good video on ND filters as well. Um, so you can see how the different ND filters affect the videos. So we try to keep it interactive by showing like the results. Um, so like if we can just sit around and talk about it, but if we don't show the results, you don't really know exactly how the ND filters will affect the, the footage. Um, so we have a lot of resources available um, and we have, um, and like, yeah, our Q and A section, according to our staff members, take a quite a while because uh, there's a lot of questions ask, uh, asked and um, sometimes the, uh, the, the members also join in. So the people who attend also join in and it's a pretty good conversation to have because um, sometimes people rock up um, and they're way more experienced than other people and they just share their experiences. So it, it is quite interactive. Mm. What uh, kind of questions do you guys get then? What's like a frequently asked question that you seem to get quite regularly? Uh, believe it or not, um, the um, propellers and um, taking care of your batteries are very frequently asked questions like when do I switch the uh, propellers? Um, like how do I store my batteries pro properly? I think mm. that's probably come up, come up quite a few times in this uh, group. Maybe you could do a YouTube video about it as well. Mm. Um, those are some pretty popular questions. Um, 
just other ones are like what editing software do you use um like do you use the adobe suite or if you're mac do you use yeah. like final cut pro that's a pretty good um conversation we have um also like sharing your photos um like where do you share them because some people have instagram some people have, don't have instagram um you know some people share to facebook so a lot of people like to uh, share their photos um i think in our group um a lot of people also post their photos which is quite nice um, some mm. people just want to be critiqued like how do they want to how can they improve like they show photos and be like hey how can i improve this photo so so the, these um the the videos that you're talking about there don't you are they are they standalone or are they um narrated i guess by the staff in store the reason i'm thinking is like the one for the nd filters is that something that we can share on our page if yeah i remember the nd filter one was done by a staff member i'll see if i can get them to share it um but yeah it's just we narrate over the top all right um, so yeah okay it's just it's just silent so yeah no that makes makes no sense if it's silent that's why i asked if it was a sort of standalone one um but if you're yeah. narrating over the top it doesn't really help and uh, what, what's your thoughts on aftermarket propellers because this has come up quite a few times as well oh yeah um from like dj don't really recommend using third-party um propellers they just recommend using the DJI ones. Um, but it's I crazy. know talking like without the jacket on, um, some aftermarket propellers are quite handy. I think Master Screws is a very, very popular brand. Um, if you're ever going to get third party uh, propellers, I definitely look towards the reputable brands um, rather than going for your cheap eBay ones, yep. which you never know what quality you'll get. So mm -hmm. ones that have been tried and tested, reviewed heavily, I would definitely go for that one. If you were to get a third party one, go for one that's been critiqued, reviewed very heavily versus just getting a cheap knockoff off eBay. Yeah, yeah. Cause a few people do that. They yeah, check out my new cheap ones that have got built in lights and stuff. And I'm just like, Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't go for built in lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like light. master screw ones, but yeah, built in lights, definitely not. No, I'm thinking that that's <laughs> going to look very pretty when it's upside down in the lake yeah. yeah speaking of lights i hate to bring up the perennial question but is there a stray bloody light that will light the damn thing up in the sky especially yes. the mini yeah, Mark, i think keith might have something and you showed um, us that accessory before daniel as well the the light on top right yeah does that throw it's, did you say? yeah it, it does um let me find it I honestly like it looks like a little TV. It's an interesting. It, it, it actually is designed as a little TV. So oh, yeah, no. see how it's like. Yeah. On and off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't one like... of the pros got one of those sort of search lights on top? And I mean, I'm assuming at least you'd be able to tell where the front of the bloody plane is. Oh yeah, the Not Enterprise the light. <laughs> light. Yeah. Mm. Um, different use case, but. Um, I think there are a few third party brands who do those throw lights. I think loom cubes were pretty popular with the Mavic two series. I think Keith's got something right there. I don't, know. I don't know if I told you the story about this one, but I lost it for 12 months and then I found it on the collar of one of my dogs. They, just, they, they kept disappearing at night. So my wife stole it from a drone and stuck it on the dog's collar. <laughs> So yeah, they're definitely third party accessories that will give you that strobe light. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, just one light, at least that it tell me where the front of the plane is, it'd be bloody handy. <laughs> mm. Especially the quite, yeah. drone. I quite that, like that little attachment that you had earlier, Daniel, with the, the light that can flash that goes on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just looking at that, that little TV thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that is where the front is. Yeah, it just lights off and off. So, hmm. yeah, that did yeah, the it's job. It's rechargeable as well. Yeah, is it quite bright as well? It would be if uh, you're flying at night. <laughs> yes. <if Yeah>. you're, <laughs> <laughs> very, very well. Depends on the see. atmospheric light. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Yeah, but what does it weigh? I mean, there's that issue. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's a ridiculous one, but you know, if you put the the skins on it, my my understanding is the decals weigh eight gram, and that will put you over, um, and into the you must register your drone category. 
of being greater than 250 grams. Mm. Now, with that light, yeah. what's that weight? Um, that's the same with the prop guards as well. The prop guards would take you over the 250. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly, yeah. But, I mean, if you had an accessory that you attached semi-permanently to your plane, mm. that would put you up in the register. You must register category. I, I don't see a problem with registering, but, you know. Well, pretty, um, much, it, pretty, pretty much everything's going to, isn't it? Leg extenders. Mm, Anything yeah, is going to, yeah, yeah. they're, they're all going to weigh more yeah. than a gram. <laughs> one gram. <laughs> you got one, one gram, gram to play, to play with. with. <laughs> got one gram to play with. Well, not That's even. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper, paper legs, I don't think are going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't yeah. sweat whilst you're leaning over the top of it. <laughs> yeah, <that's> it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gram. Especially there. while one of those sheriffs are around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but it was just a question. I mean, like I say, I, I don't see a problem with registering the damn thing. But are they, if you register it, are you going to be required to turn on your identification system in the drone? There's one there that transmits the name of the drone, your your um, email address, your ARN, whatever, and um, and transmits it from your drone. I think this is a good question if we have like a CASA rep come on. Mm. Um, I think I think Keith and you yeah, guys are yeah. discussing that. To yeah, to <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to organise another session uh, with somebody from Casa to come and talk about, um, you know, what the rules are, what the regs are, whatever, and what's upcoming. So what's happening in terms of registration and that sort of stuff. But they're very difficult yeah. to get hold of because they're government. So mm -hmm. I'm, <laughs> I'm battling for a decent contact. So I will keep chipping away. Yep, yep. yep. No, that's cool. Have a lot yeah, of I mean, there are many gray areas there and I mean like I say I don't have a drama with registering and broadcasting who I am um, I do attempt to, to keep within the rules and yeah. uh, but you know it's just you know if if people are starting to wake decals on their plane and then suddenly find that they're not registered and then they're in breach mm. you know it becomes problematic for um, you know people who are just flying for fun yeah for sure no, you have a good point definitely yeah. See, I, I'm very like I'm, I'm supportive of what you know CASA are trying to do in terms of safety and having some sort of regulating body to make sure that everyone 100%. is safe. We should be receiving um, the planes squawk box um, <laughs> transmission so that we know where the buggers are that we can yeah. avoid them, uh, yeah. rather than relying on a half deaf old bugger with no eyesight going, "Oh, is that a plane? Or <laughs> <laughs> bag? <laughs> Shit, yeah." <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and like, you know, one thing that I don't want to undermine what they're doing or I don't want to like, you know, like th I'm just saying this as a thought, but at the end of the day, it's very unlikely anyway that someone is going to come up to you, look at your drone and go, hey, you've got a skin on. Is that registered? Like <laughs> there aren't many CASA reps going around. Like, more so, I think the thing that is more so monitored from my understanding is the kind of photos and videos you're posting online. If they're in any sort of breach of regulations, then CASA will potentially uh, chase you up on that. Um, yeah, but, you I know, mean, the other it's stuff, like, you know. The legal thing, and, you know, like if you are involved in an incident, the first thing they're going to do is weigh your drone mm. and then determine stuff like that. It's just the legal process. But, you yeah. know, just from a legal viewpoint, it is a, it's a little iffy. <laughs> if you put the decals on, then you're going to be seven grams over. It is, and, yeah. You know, and there you fail to register your drone. Mm. is an offence in itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm you know, just taking legalese to its extreme. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I wonder what, what they would say. I guess that's something. Uh, there would be so many questions I'm sure the group would have for oh, a cancer representative. Lord. I would love I'd to. Risk. Sorry for the poor bugger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, which might be oh, why they're, they're slow in responding. Why it's hard to get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have something to yeah. do yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah think it, it, it's a gray area. You think about in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You wake up at like three in the morning. Yeah. And just oh my god, with a cold sweat. My god, my drone's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> you run through and just rip the decal off straight away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or you, Damn or you crows. just, or you just go sod it and leave your decal on and just take the props off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, it. <laughs> 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 mm. 
<laughs> yeah, I'd be interested to hear where they stand on all of that. That would be good. But yeah, I guess none of us can really answer that. We, we have no idea. No, that's where a dude would come in handy. Mm. They want to send a bright one. <laughs> well, someone with a bit of resilience. Because <laughs> yeah. we will be grilling them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what about this? If the moon was in the seventh phase. <laughs> yeah. But it'd be interesting to see how this all evolves because obviously they're trying to get a standard uh, to start. Um, but I noticed in the US uh, that they're talking about removing night flying restrictions completely. Mm. That would um, be damaged. Yeah. Well, so they're going, look, well, no one's ever had an accident flying a drone at night, so we're not going to get that hung up about it. Um, so I know that uh, the US are looking at relaxing a lot of the drone restrictions that they have in place for recreational drone use. And one of them is night flying. Yeah, I, I read of a recent case where there was a uh, drone helicopter collision. And uh, the conclusion was that a drone is as bad as likely to drop a helicopter out of the sky as a bird hitting it. Mm. You know, it's just um, a little over reactive. You know, this whole, you know, uh, a plane is going to be dropped out of the sky because the drone hit it. I mean, unless you're flying a 25 kilo drone, you know, a mini is not going to take down anything. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think that the bigger um, concerns is around privacy. So people you're know, using drones for inappropriate photography. Um, and uh, annoyance factor, so they're, they're not keen on you know, public monuments and parks and stuff with drones flying around. But I mean, if you if you live in the middle of nowhere, then they're going go mad, <laughs> go for your life. I um, mean, then they're not going to send anyone out to the middle of the you know, back end of Wyoming or something to check to see if you're flying your drone <laughs> at night. So they're, they're just going, well, yeah, we're just going to relax a lot of this sort of stuff. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see where. Casa goes in the long term. That would open up such a fun playground if we could fly at night. Oh, would it not? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then we I, I read, uh, I don't know, I think it was on um, the Mavic drone page, but I read a case where some woman noticed a, a sound of angry bees hanging outside a bedroom window at night and looked out to find a, a drone hovering outside a bedroom window. Yeah, and yeah. she questioned, you know, what what should she do? Call Casa or call the police? And of course, the general <laughs> consensus was call everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a loon out there. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, people ask me that regularly. Do you drone up to people's windows and look in? I go honestly, seriously. No matter how deeply you are in sex, you will notice my drone hanging outside your bedroom window, and you'll look and go, "Good lord, this a bastard of a drone." <laughs> <laughs> It's just not practical. <laughs> that seems to be such a common question, though. Like, there's a lot of concern about like what drone pilots are using their drones for. The amount of times I've been asked about that, you know, like if I've had my drone up in the air and there's been, you know, someone walking by with a kid, like there's concern about me yeah. filming the kid, or you know, do you spy on people with that? And for the most part, no one is going to do that. Like, we're buying. It's a hobby. Like, we love taking photos and videos. It's just. It's really annoying when a negative narrative gets attached to a hobby that, you know, has such good yeah. intentions. The the drone Karens, as I believe the term is nowadays. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Um, just before we, we miss it, Joshua asked about the CE and FCC, which is something that has been like an ongoing thing with other drone releases from DJI. So can you talk to that at all, Daniel? Whether the Mavic Mini was a FCC version? Yeah, I've, I've um, had, this con had this question quite a few times. Um, when I reached out to the uh, product engineers, they said the drones that are in Australia are FCC, um, mm -hmm. and they were saying that they've got an FCC ID, um, but they don't make the drone to a specific Australian regulation. Um, I know they do American, um, European, now China with the SRRC, um, but from my conversations with them, they've just been saying that they've FCC. So. Okay. And for people that don't know the difference, can you talk to that a little bit? Like what the difference is between CE and FCC? I believe they are different power bands. Um, so the power they are, they transmit, um, 
that's what I know. Um, right. But I think in Australia, it's also got to do with the amount of channels um, that will determine whether it can go into FCC mode or not. Um, but yeah, from the product engineers, that's what I've been told. Um, but yeah, it is quite confusing. They don't make it very clear because um, they don't have like an Australian regulation on the specs page. Yeah. Because I've noticed that as well with um, the the comments on the on their website for particular drones, it will tell you the range, and then there'll be an asterisk, and then when you scroll down to read that, they'll they'll specify the the different uh, bands or whatever you refer to them as. They have different ranges associated with either FCC or CE. So that's something that's yeah, like it's kind of tucked away and not really spoken about. So I guess that's good to know that. You know, we have some information around the Australian build. Mm. That, that's just what I've been told. Um, but yeah, I think in previous drone models, they were um, CE. Um, but from what I've been up, like what I've been told so far that it's FCC. So, yeah. Mm. But yeah. I love if they could do a, um, a, make it very clear, black and white um, for mm. everyone. So. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Isn't there a sticker on the drone that says whether it's FCE or otherwise? Oh, yeah. There would be, yeah, the FCC ID. So if you buy the Mavic Mini in a CE country, you won't have that FCC ID um, yeah. on your box. You won't have that. So, but yeah, yeah then so again, I'm assuming that we're all FC, which, which the better one anyway, <laughs> um, uh, in Australia. Yeah, our models so only have the 5.8 gigahertz mm -hmm. um, versus if you go to like, if you buy yours in Europe, you're going to have the 2.4. Um, but yeah, your, your, your drone will still be limited. If you take your uh, drone and you go to a different country, they will still limit the power bands. So that's what I've been told. Uh, even if you go in Australia, you go to a European country, you will still have a limited flight. So instead of using the full our band will go down to CE for that country. Yeah, so, the, so the the plane will adapt to whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, it's based on your operating. your GPS location of your phone. So mm -hmm. yeah. most of the time, we'll ask you to restart your um, device. So it's like when you for like the Mavic Airs, for example, the first generation when you got a refurbished one, because um, they're made for the worldwide market, predominantly for um, America. Um, when you turned it on, it would actually ask you to change your Wi-Fi settings to go to the lower settings for Australia, but that also the Mavic Air first yeah. gen. So, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, do you really can't rate Mavic anywhere in the world with that many? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I was saying that we can truly wreak havoc throughout the world with our minis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so daniel like uh we're getting close to to nine o'clock now and i know uh you know i was maybe thinking about wrapping it up soon so the video wasn't too long but is there anything uh else that you wanted to discuss or any other questions that the the listeners have before we kind of round this out um um it's open to the floor if anyone has uh, any questions it's a good time to ask um yeah I will mention that we do have um, a rental service. Um, mm -hmm. It's a plug-in. Um, basically, uh, if you're thinking about upgrading your Mavic Mini and you're just unsure as to which drone to get, um, you can always take advantage of our rental service. So you can rent like a Mavic 2 Zoom or Mavic 2 Pro for a day. Um, so you can see whether that drone will suit your needs. Because um, oh. like, there's a big debate between the Zoom and the Pro, which one's mm. for you. Will you take advantage of the camera or would you prefer the optical zoom? Um, some people buy both. Um, but if you're choosing one or the other, um, we do have a rental service so you can, um, you know, you, you use the drones and see if that drone will be for you. You could, you could be uh, wanting a Phantom. You can rent a Phantom and see if the Phantom right. drone will suit what you need. So, yeah, that's available that's at really other cool. stores. How what does that work? Price? Yeah, <laughs> price range. That's a good one. Price range. Um, it's on our website. Let me just uh, whip it up really quickly. Um, just wait for it to load. 
So for like a Zoom, it's sixty dollars a day or one hundred eighty for a week. The Pro is eighty dollars for a day and two hundred forty for a week. Um, if you rent a drone and then uh, decide to buy the drone, we can always uh, help you out with a, a purchase price. So well, if you borrow the Zoom for a day and then you want to buy it, we can knock off some. Um, so you, your rental is a brand new drone, I'm assuming. Uh, not necessarily. They could be. Um, yeah. They're mostly like we have a rental fleet. Um, mm -hmm. But let's mm -hmm. say if you do rent the drone and you come back the next day and you, and you really like it and you want to purchase a drone of that, like that drone, um, we can work yeah. out a price for you. Yeah. On a new one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. Exactly. And, uh, and how does that work in terms of any accidents you might have with that drone? What kind of contract are <laughs> you signing for that? Uh, no. Yep. Um, the fly will be, um, it'll be responsible for your flight. So yep. typically okay. when you fly, when you fly a drone, you want to make sure that you fly it in a big open field where there's not a lot of obstacles. Um, like if you want to test out the active track, sure. Um, just make sure you're testing it like on an oval so there's no obstacles and then you wouldn't have an issue. I mean, most of the time when you fly your drone, you don't really have issues because you're aware of your surroundings. Um, so we haven't, we've had like zero crashes with our rental so far. Mm. Um, maybe <laughs> touch wood. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried a bit what that says about your active track. <laughs> <laughs> active track is uh, it's a, it's a pretty good feature. The Mavic Air 2 does a really good job with the active tracking. The Mavic 2 yep. series is pretty decent, um, but it's definitely come a long way since the first generation active track. So yeah. every time they bring out a new version, it just gets better and better. Yeah. And, and what about um, <laughs> renting an Inspire? Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah that, that's, a, that's a thing. Yeah, you can rent it. I'll see what the pricing is. It's $180 have... per day. Um, wow. Yeah. Most of, if, if you're renting an Inspire 2, um, we do require more information because yeah. um, most of the time people who rent Inspire 2s are from a company. Um, you have your own company insurance and whatnot. So, and, and what about the legal okay. issue of not having a refill and renting a, an Inspire to buzz we, around to see whether you really want to get to a refill? We, we don't rent to anyone. If, if the drone you want to rent requires any licenses and if you don't have it, we won't rent it to you. Yeah, so you need to have cool. the appropriate licenses. Yeah, mm. that's really cool. So, do you offer that at all of your stores? That yes, rental all our stores. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But it's best to call us up or visit the store to book it in, because um, it is getting quite popular at the moment, um, and we only have a, like a limited fleet. So we have a few drones of each type at our stores, um, but sometimes we have commercial clients who want to borrow the uh, the drone for literally like a month. Um, right. so then, yeah, cool. so like the inspires we're talking about a lot of rental companies, uh, rent the inspires because when they do their shoots, they might, might already have an inspire, but they just want a backup ready to go just in case if anything goes wrong, mm. um, they won't waste a lot of money on a shoot. So, yeah, that's really cool. And also in terms of new drones being added to the DJI fleet, obviously the, the mm -hmm. Mavic Air 2 recently came out. <laughs> How yeah. quickly after the release is a rental available? Um, usually like a month or two because the mm -hmm. first month or two is like we're running out of stock or running out of stock. Built. Like we just got to keep um, the stock flowing. But after a month or two, things settle down and then we can add them in. So right now the Mavic Air 2 is available. Um, that's renting $70 a day. Um, so you can definitely pick one up and uh, use that. Uh, thing. That's a really cool idea. I really like that idea. Um, what about um, D1's repair service? We haven't talked about that. Do you want to talk about that quickly? Yeah, I'll touch on it briefly. Um, so we I wasn't aware this... that was the thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, we do do repairs. Um, our repair facility is in Brunswick, Victoria, but we can do... Uh, via interstate so you can come to our stores and we can organize it to be repaired in our Brunswick store um, but we also offer a same day um, express service so it's similar concept to the care of fresh so if you bring in a damaged drone um, basically we can quote up how much it will uh, cost to repair um, assessment and everything's free so there's no charge for an assessment um, basically there's an additional fee on top 
if you want an express replacement. And what happens is you give us your damaged drone and we'll give you a brand new drone. So there's an extra fee and typically it's a hundred dollars on top of your repair fee. So let's say um, you're bringing like a Mavic 2 Pro, it's all damaged. Um, you're going to arm uh, that's knocked off and you need one replaced within the day because you've got a shoot coming up tomorrow. You, you can utilize that service we have where we quote you the, um, the repair for the drone and say here, this is how much it will cost. If you add an extra hundred dollars on top, you can get a replacement drone right here, right now. So that's an option we have. Um, and a lot of people do take it up, especially if they have planned shoots coming up. So let's say like real estate agents, for example, not, not agents, people who take photos um, for that, for those uh, purposes. Um, if they need that drone, they'll go ahead with that service. But we just, we do normal repairs as well. Um, mm. It's not on the same day. And does that impact on your um, care refresh or if you were to repair during your, your period of care refresh? Um, Cause we've got, um, what do you call it? Genuine, like we were an authorized repair center, so it won't impact. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And if, if you swap over your drone, we can get the carefresh organized to be swapped over. Sweet. So right. That's something we can do. Great. Does anyone else have any other questions before we wrap this up? Does not look like it. Oh. Anything in the chat? Um, thanks for your time today um, Daniel this has been great yeah thank no you problem Daniel. no thank you for inviting me on it's been uh, pretty good um, I look forward to more of these um, with other people it um, should be interesting love to hear the CASA one and mm. uh, I can get a photography videography one organized as well so it'll be good to get everyone involved in the community yeah definitely and let us know about the um, events that you're going to be hosting as well those in-person experiences when things start clearing up yeah yeah great so hopefully it won't be too long until we can start that back up hmm. cool well thank you so much for joining us i'll um have the video up in the coming days i guess and i'll uh, put the link up on the facebook group and send that through to you yeah no no problem should be good cool well thank you sweet thank you so much um if you guys have any more specific questions just email me and I'll respond to you.